Good morning. How's everyone? Good, excellent. Welcome to Faith. Welcome members and visitors, virtual and in person. For those of you who may not know, I'm Pastor Claire Acliao, pastor here at Faith Lutheran Church. If you're joining us virtually, uh, please take a moment to tell us who you are and where you're from by typing it into the chat. Here at Faith, we welcome all people, no matter their race, culture, economic status, age, ability, sexual orientation, gender identity or expression, and, and no matter where you are on your spiritual journey. All are invited to participate fully in the life of faith because we are all one in Christ Jesus. I'm so glad you all are here today. Thank you for joining us for worship. Thank you for wearing your masks um, and being considerate for each other. Um, those of you online, if you haven't gotten your communion set up yet, go ahead and grab your elements because we will be having communion today as usual. Also, the worship program for those of you online is at flcjeff.org under the worship tab. Make sure you click on the right one because I don't think I took last week's out of the folder yet. Um, uh, Jules, who is joining us today? Uh, looks like we have Patty Smith today. Patty Smith, welcome. And Smith. three other people. Oh, three other people. Awesome. <laughs> it's great to have you in worship today. Let's take a moment to prepare our hearts and minds for worship. You may rise as you are able. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you anointed Jesus at his baptism with the Holy Spirit and revealed him as your beloved Son. Keep all who are born of water and the Spirit faithful in your service, that we may rejoice to be called children of God through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. So why don't you guys sit here today? Girls, why don't you girls sit here today? Let me grab my stuff. All right. So I'm just going to sit right here in front of you. Oof. So when we go to a new place to meet new people, sometimes we wear a name tag to tell people who we are, right? So people know our name. Well, when we are baptized, it's like God gives us a special name tag that tells us who we are. God names us. So I'm going to give you each a name tag that says, hello, my name is, and I want you to take a marker and write your name on it. So whatever color you want. Oops. Awesome. And then you can peel it from the back when you're done writing your name. And you can stick it to your shirt or your jacket or your leggings or your pants or your shoes or your mask or wherever you want. Don't stick it to the church, though. Good job. All right. Hello, my name is Luna. Hello, my name is Maya. And hello, my name is Lena. Awesome. So there's another thing that happens in baptism. God names us, but God also claims us, right? So God tells us, who do we belong to? So do you know who we belong to? Our parents. Yeah, who else? Mom or dad. Mom or dad. Yeah. What? Jesus. Jesus. Good. We belong, yeah. Mom or pop pop? Your family? Wow. Lots of answers, yes. Um, but ultimately, we belong to all those people, but ultimately, we belong to God, right? So on this name tag, it says, I belong to, and I want you to write God. So the letters for that are G O D. Maya, do you need me to write it down to show you? Or do you know G O D? You know it? Okay. You got it? Good. Perfect. Good job. You guys are good with your letters. Awesome. So then take the back off of that one and stick it to yourself too. I belong to God. So in our baptism, 
like I said, God gives us our name and says who we are. And also God says, you belong to me. You belong to God, right? Because God, <laughs> God loves you the most, right? And, uh, and so much and more than we can even describe, right? So let's pray. Gracious God, thank you for our baptisms. Thank you for loving us no matter what. Uh, thank you for blessing us no matter what. Thank you for giving us names and telling us who we are and for claiming us as your own. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, and you can just leave the garbage there. We'll pick it up after service, okay? And I will take your markers. Thank you. Awesome. Our first lesson today comes from Isaiah, the 43rd chapter. But now thus says the Lord, He who created you, O Jacob, He who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt as your ransom, Ethiopia and Seba in exchange for you. Because you are precious in my sight and honored, and I love you, I give people in return for you, nations in exchange for your life. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east, and from the west I will gather you. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from far away and my daughters from the end of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, who I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. Word of God, word of life. Our psalm today is Psalm 29, and we'll read it verse by verse responsively. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters, the God of glory thunders, the Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees, the Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. The voice of the Lord bursts forth in lightning flashes. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees writhe and strips the forests bare, and in the temple of the Lord all are crying, Glory! O Lord, give strength to your people. Give them, O Lord, the blessings of peace. Our second reading today comes from Acts chapter 8. Now when the apostles at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them. The two went down and prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For as yet the Spirit had not come upon any of them, they had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then Peter and John laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. Word of God, word of life. Gospel according to Luke, the third chapter. 
as the people were filled with expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Now when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace be yours in abundance, dear beloved children of God, from God our Creator, through the Lord Jesus Christ, in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today we have the story of the baptism of the Lord. And if you're wondering why this text feels so familiar, it's because this is about the third time we've had it within a two-month time period. So yeah, that's our lectionary for you. I don't know why it does it does this, but it does. Um, so we celebrated Jesus' birth two weeks ago, and then we celebrated the arrival of the Magi for Epiphany three days ago, and today we celebrate Jesus' baptism. And again, thanks to our wonky lectionary, it may seem as if this were an infant baptism because of the way the story's been progressing, but Jesus is actually about 30 years old in today's reading as he's being baptized. So I asked myself this week, what else is there to say about the baptism of Jesus that hasn't been said in the previous few times it has come up? Not to mention all the times this reading has come up throughout our lives every three years or more. So I got to thinking about the baptisms that I've experienced, starting with my own. When I entered into seminary, one of the pieces of information I needed to fill out on my paperwork was when and where I was baptized. Well, I knew where I was baptized. It was the church that is still my home church to this day. If a pastor can still have a home church, I'm not sure how that works exactly. Um, but yeah, it's the church that I attended all my life, uh, except for eight years of grade school attendance to a Missouri Synod church, or what I call a Missouri Synod church. <laughs> Um, it's the church where my dad got married both times, it's the church where I was ordained, and it's the church where Jules and I were married. So the location wasn't a problem, I just needed to find out the date. Well, it took the church a few weeks to dig out the record book from way back when, so in the meantime I was asking around to see if anyone knew or could remember when it was. Of course, no one could remember which weekend it happened, but they knew it was in summer since I was born in May, and it was shortly after I was born. And the weather was so nice out that my godparents rode their Harley Davidsons to the baptism because apparently their car wouldn't start. So that's pretty much everything I knew about my baptism. So I asked my dad this week to tell me more about it. He told me I was baptized on a beautiful Sunday day, a Sunday morning in June. There were sunny skies, a few puffy clouds, and it was about 80 degrees out. I'm thinking about that in today's weather. Um, <laughs> it was early service, so the church was packed. Dad says the service and the baptism went smooth, and I was a quiet little girl while the pastor did his thing. Dad cried a little bit. That's like no surprise, um, as did my grandparents. And afterwards, we went for breakfast at a Sunday buffet somewhere, and we ate more than we should have. Now, as a pastor, I haven't baptized anyone yet, but as a minister's assistant and as an intern, I was part of two amazing baptisms. The first one was, was when I was doing gentle worship ministry with my late pastor, Walter, and we baptized a girl in our uh, special needs community. She was probably about 10, and she wanted the entire gentle worship community to be her sponsors. So everyone present stood up around the font with her as Pastor Walter baptized her. And then we celebrated by planting a few baby trees and lighting off a rocket from the parking lot. 
The second baptism was when I was a pastoral intern. We were at the youth gathering in Houston, hanging out at a water park for the day. And a friend of the pastor's daughter was so moved by her experiences she was having at the gathering that she wanted to be baptized. So we baptized her in the wave pool at the water park in front of everybody present. Shortly after returning home from the gathering, her family moved her back to the Philippines, and that's the last time I heard of her since Jules and I moved back to Iowa just a few months after that. Now Jules was baptized twice. She was baptized as an infant in the Anglican Church in Malaysia, and she was baptized again when she was in her 20s in Kokomo, Indiana, as they, that church, didn't believe in infant baptism, which, by the way, we do. She doesn't remember her first baptism, obviously, and her second, was, second one was apparently pretty uneventful because she couldn't remember hardly anything about it other than she was cold, and they made her wear a white gown like the angels wear. So, what was your baptism like? Were you baptized as an infant, or a child, or an adult? Do you remember or know anything about your baptism? Do you celebrate it each year? What about other people's baptisms that you've witnessed? What do you remember about them? We have multiple baptisms happening in today's readings. In our epistle today, we have Philip preaching to the people of Samaria and baptizing many of the Samaritans. Peter and John hear about what a good job Philip is doing, and they travel there to see for themselves. In our gospel reading for today, we have John the baptizer baptizing the people with water, and then baptizing Jesus himself in the Holy Spirit. And in Isaiah, we have several references to baptism and some words about what, bapti what baptism does. It redeems us. It is God calling us by name and claiming us. And God is promising to be with us. So now, some people get upset when Christianity becomes too political, right? Because we're actually called, but we're actually called to, to social justice work by virtue of our baptism. Our baptismal vows literally state to care for others in the world God made and to work for justice and peace. So any dividing lines that existed between us and others or between any two groups of people are completely washed away in baptism. Our baptismal vows literally say that we renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God. Worldly powers like systemic racism, white supremacy, bigotry of any kind, injustice, discrimination, individualism, and hate. That's the community that we are being invited into in our baptism. And yes, it's political. Don't believe me? Look at what else is happening while this is taking place in our gospel reading. In the three verses that were removed from this text for today, John the baptizer is speaking truth to power, and that power is rejecting it. John spoke up about the crimes that Herod had committed, and Herod arrested John, threw him in jail, and eventually he was beheaded. It was a scandal. And to remove that scandal from this text is to not be faithful to the text. Baptism is a radical act of inclusion and a radical statement of God's power over earthly power. Have you ever noticed that Jesus doesn't even start his ministry until John is arrested? John is arrested and then Jesus comes into his own. What does that say about who Jesus is? Baptism is where you are named and claimed by God. Baptism is the moment when you officially enter into the community of believers. It's the start of your relationship as a child of Christ. It's the swearing against those earthly things that separate us from God. It's swearing against the forces of evil that were designed to pull us apart and create divisions between us. Baptism is an introduction into the community of the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It also seals us into this community of believers together. It's what our relationships are built on. It affirms us and it affirms our belovedness. It affirms our relationship with each other and with God. 
Baptism is like the new year. You become a new person. You make new goals. You set new resolutions. You aim to be a better version of yourself. But it's better than New Year because it doesn't matter if you break your resolution. Baptism isn't a one and done thing. It's a continually renewing thing. And baptism is the reason we can rest in the hope and faith that we will be with our loved ones again. That we will be with people like Jim Turrison again. Baptism is the promise that allows us to live a life of faith confident that when we die, when we are released from our old, broken bodies, we will be given a new life. Baptism is what enlivens our bones, drowns out our tears, washes away the sin within us, and drowns the evil around us. Baptism is what seals us by the Holy Spirit and marks us with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. join together in the creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance, so we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made. For those of you online, if you have any prayer requests, go ahead and type them in the chat. By the Holy Spirit, you gather your church and send it out in mission to share the good news of Jesus. Inspire your faithful people to be fervent in prayer and service, that all people know that they are precious in God's sight. God of grace, you reveal your love and power through water and the Spirit. Guard rivers, seas, and all bodies of water from destruction and pollution. Secure access to clean water for all and protect the land from drought and flood. God of grace. Amen. Establish among the nations the blessings of peace. Raise up leaders who will protect vulnerable people in their care. Strengthen advocates who risk reputation or retaliation for the sake of mercy and justice. God of grace. Amen. You protect us through the fires and troubled waters of this life. Assure us that we will not be cut off from you by illness or despair, anxiety or pain, confusion or weakness. 
Comfort all who are in need, especially Tammy, Charlotte, Larry, Greta, Sonia, Phil, Karen, Dorothy and Gordon, Patty, Brandon, Lisa, Aaron, Norma, Eli, Pam, Roger, Shirley, Danielle, Teresa, Larry, Mike, Betty, Alice, James, and the family and friends of Jim Turrison. God of grace, we are joined in baptism to Christ and to one another. Bless those who are newly baptized and those who are preparing for baptism. Help us to be faithful in fellowship, worship, evangelism, service, and justice seeking. God of grace, God of glory, we praise you with those signif ce celebrating significant milestones in their lives, especially for Janet, Felicity, Jesse, and Bruce with birthdays this week. For the people in this place and for others, for other needs in our community, God of grace, you have created each of your saints for glory. We give thanks for those who, who you have called by name into your eternal embrace, especially Jim Turrison. Comfort us in grief and release us from fear. God of grace. Yeah. Jules, do you have any additional prayer requests? No additional prayer. Okay. Uh, Lord God, we pray for those things that are on our minds or on our hearts that we may name aloud now or in our hearts. God of grace. Since we have such great hope in your promises, O oh God, we lift these and all of our prayers to you in confidence and faith through Jesus Christ, our Savior. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share that peace with one another from where we're standing. heaven and earth. Day by day you shower us with blessings. As you have raised us to new life in Christ, give us glad and generous hearts, ready to praise you and to respond to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. Give those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come to the banquet, for all is now ready. You may be seated. So for communion, we have wine on the outside of the tray. We have juice in the middle. We have gluten-free options, so if you are gluten-free, just say so, and we will do that. Um, and I think that's all you need to know. Your usher will direct you.
Let us pray. Life-giving God, in the mystery of Christ's resurrection, you send light to conquer darkness, water to give new life, and the bread of life to nourish your people. Send us forth as witnesses to your Son's resurrection, that we may show your glory to all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Here. Yep. Good morning, everybody. My name is Greg Turson. I'm uh, Jim and Judy's uh, youngest son. And uh, I was asked today to uh, read my father's uh, obituary that I wrote. But I wanted to break the ice a little bit um, before I just started here, especially with the weather. On the way in, I think about my dad a lot. And uh, on the way in today, I got to thinking about some of his bad jokes. And so I got one for you. I got to tell it. Um, but we're from northern Minnesota. Yeah, Minnesota. Yeah, you know. And we were outside walking one day, and um, my dad looks at me and goes, Boy, Greg, it's sure raining cats and dogs out here. And I said, yeah, I know. I just stepped in the poodle. <laughs> he would have liked that one. <laughs> All right. On Wednesday, December 22nd, 2021, James, I don't want to say his middle name because he didn't like it, Terrison, passed away at the age of 76. James was born on June 19, 1945 in Halleck, Minnesota to Eddie and Elaine Turson. My dad was one of four siblings, Alan, uh, Jeannie Turson, Larry, Diane Turson, Betty, um, and Steve Ness, and Betty was definitely his angel on earth. Each one of them made an impact on my dad, and he loved them all so very much. My dad was one of the best athletes to come out of Halleck. He was part of the 1961 state hockey tournament as a sophomore. Um, and just to add to that, that's the only state hockey team they've uh, ever had. Um, but if you ever saw him at the rink, or maybe even just here, he always had a good story to tell about those days. Fast forward to October 26, 1973, James married Judith Judy Vanderbeek, aka the best wife and mother uh, ever. Somehow he convinced her to move to the North Pole, a.k.a. Halleck, Minnesota. It's about 20 minutes from Canada, so it gives you kind of an idea. And my brother said the weather this morning is 34 degrees below. Yeah. They celebrated 48 years of marriage this year. James has three boys, Jeff um, and his wife Stacy, Mike Turson, and then uh, myself and my wife Amanda. Um, Greg, me, was by far the favorite and was told all the time by this. So. Somehow the other uh, brothers don't seem to feel that that was uh, necessarily true, but it's true. In all serious note, seriousness, though, he loved us more than we'll ever know. Jeff, he is so proud of you and everything you accomplished. You are strong and a wonderful man. You married the perfect wife and have the perfect daughter. And Mike, you are the perfect example of strength. You have gone through so much and always seem to find the light at the end of the tunnel. My dad enjoyed the outdoors, and he definitely taught that to us. The terse and deer hunting adventures were always our favorite. We always did really well filling out our tags, but that is not what made those weekends legendary. Family from all over would come hunting with us that first weekend in November, mostly because they wanted to see who was going to fall in the river or out of a tree stand. Fishing was also fun, and just to, you know, I know it's we're down here, but I'm talking about ice fishing. You actually drill a hole in the ice and you fish. It's kind of amazing. But um, fishing was always fun. Great memories there. And uh, my brother Mike, every year, managed to drop his glasses down the hole. Every single time. But great memories there. Always going to cherish them. My dad had several grandchildren and he loved every chance he got to see them. Papa had stories about each one of you and told them often. When the time is right, I'll be happy to share or tell them, tell them to you. I will say this, 
to all the grandchildren, remember those memories and he will always be with you. He loved you all so very much. I'll close with this. My dad had a kind heart. Everything he did in his life was always with the best intentions. And that's something he really taught to me. If he knew you, he cared about you. I was one of the lucky ones to, call him, to be able to call him my dad. I'll be always forever grateful for that. The picture that you see with, uh, with this says it all. Cheers to a happy life. Be happy and be kind. And I will see you all again one day. Okay, so now I'm crying and I have to do announcements? <laughs> what? Okay. Um, thank you, Greg. That was wonderful. And thank you to all the family who came today to share. Um, announcements. There's no youth today because um, a couple of our youth have, not our youth at Faith, but a couple of the other youth in the conference have COVID. So our youth thing is, uh, it will be rescheduled or, I don't know, they'll let us know. Um, they were trying to have a game night on January 14th for the youth, um, for, well, for a, anyone ages six and up. Um, and I don't know how old our three little ones are, but if you're cl you're five, right? Oh, you're six? Okay, so all three of you should be able to attend. Are you six? Oh, you're nine? All right. Oh, good. And you are six. <laughs> Okay, excellent. So all three of you can attend if you want. Um, I don't know if it will happen though because, like I said, some of our youth have COVID. I don't know where we will be by the 14th. Um, but you can um, RSVP to this gentleman named Aaron or just to us and we'll fast, for or fast forward. Forward, we'll forward it to Aaron. So then, January 6th, 6 to 9 p.m. No, oh my gosh. January 14th, 6 to 9 p.m. Um, oh, and there's a flyer, and I think I posted it somewhere. I can't remember. I'll try and remember to do it if I haven't done it yet. Wow, I'm good at this. Um, okay. <laughs> Table talk, January Thursday, January 13th at 6 o'clock. Um, if Common House in Jeffersonville is open by then, we will have it there. Otherwise, we will meet at Pints and Union again in New Albany. Um, and I'll post something on Facebook or send an email out or something that says one or the other which way we're going. Um, annual meeting, Sunday, December 23rd. We'll adopt our 2022 budget at that time. Um, the other next youth event for the gathering will be, let's see, January 9, February 13, and that will be at First Lutheran Church, 417th East Broadway over the river. So that's February 13. Um, and I think, is anybody selling Girl Scout cookies today, right now? Oh, they are. Do you want to come up and ask uh, for sales? Scouts, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So let's tell me your name. Lena. Lena. Maya. Maya. Lena. Luna. Luna. <laughs> Luna. Yeah. Lena, Maya, and Luna are all selling for Girl Scouts uh, cookies, right? Yes. Yeah. So um, after service, if anybody wants to buy cookies from you, then where can they find you? In the coffee room. In the coffee room. Yep. <laughs> Good. Excellent. Okay. Thank you, girls. <laughs> All right. Go have a seat. <laughs> Good job. Um, any other announcements? Oh, there's one thing I want to do that we haven't done. We've never done it before, but we're going to do it. 
If you have a smartphone and you have Facebook, get out your smartphone, like right now in church. And unlock it and go to Facebook. And then we're going to, what are we going to do? We're going to click on the what's on your mind thing, like you're going to make a post, right? And then you're going to say check in. It's like down below. Check in. And then faith should show up. So you tap it. Somebody's got the service going. <laughs> it's okay. All right. And then say something like, I'm at church, or this place is great, or this place is meh, or whatever. Just say whatever you want. Or Girl Scout cookies sold here. Whatever. Say something. Uh, I'm at church. And then post it. So this is one of the things that I'm always talking about at the end of the service. Um, one of the ways we can spread the word about faith um, and get more people in the pews uh, and stuff like that. And, you know, evangelize, obviously. Um, so that was fun. Thank you for humoring me. <laughs> Any other announcements? No? No. Okay, we're good. If you have an offering that didn't make it into the offering plate on your way in, you can put it in the plate in the narthex on your way out. Those of you online, there's an offering button. There's a give tab on our website, um, which is flcjeff.org. So go to the give tab and you can give online. You do not have to create an account. I want to thank everyone online for joining us today. If you joined us uh, in online and you found it meaningful, we would love it if you could prayerfully consider giving so we can keep Faith's ministry is going strong. Contributions can be sent to that click link thing or sent to 2014 Allison Lane, Jeffersonville, Indiana, 47130. Remember that in this world that is becoming more and more reliant on technology, that to share is to bear witness. So that's what we just did. We bear, bared, bore, for witness, thank you, um, uh, on, on social media, right? We made our presence known. Um, so you can do things like that, or you can like us on Facebook, um, Faith Within Church at ELCA. Be sure to find us and click the follow button. Those of you online, if you enjoyed today's service, go ahead and hit the thumbs up button. Um, we are also on YouTube, Faith Lutheran Church, Jeffersonville, Indiana, so be sure to subscribe there too. And lastly, you can find us and follow us on Instagram at Faith Lutheran Jeff, all one word. And here end the announcements. Um, and let us rise as we are able. Oh, do we have another one? Oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, yeah, your job. Okay. The Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.
Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thank you.